Well, here we are. Welcome to episode two of Australian Muscle Chats 2. Uh, this episode is once again brought to you by Australian Muscle and Australian Muscle the Gym. Check us out on australianmuscle.com.au and all social media platforms. This week my special guest is someone that I've known for a while and he's a big icon in the South Australian strength scene. Um, I'd like to welcome Jordan Biggie Stephens. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much for having me on. No I worries. Can't, I can't believe I'm actually number two. You're number two. You're, You're number two. Do you know who was number one? Who? Me. Of course. <laughs> How could you have anybody else besides Kim, the man? That's right. But no, thank you very much for having me on. Um, no, it's, I... it's really good. I mean, you've been a, a, a huge part um, on the South Australian strength scene for a long time. I've known you for years. I think like, since I was a teenager. I reckon yeah. it's been that long. It really has been, I think, what, 28 now? So I was a yeah. teenager. So it's got to be over 10 years. It has to it be. Would have or at to least be. near yeah. 10. So it's been That's a while. Right. You've dealt with me for 10 years, Kim. You deserve a medal or a trophy <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, I've um, watched you grow, <laughs> literally, from um, a, a, a little kid. Well, you weren't a little kid. You were a big kid. Oh. What happened? How did you... How, how did all this start with you? Like, um, you moved... Was it into weightlifting that you got into? Well, it's funny. It actually started before weightlifting. So I guess I was always a big kid, even in primary school. I was something like 90-odd kilos in primary school. So I was, I was a big kid as a young it's kid. It's always the, the case with everything. Like, you see the body, good bodybuilders, you know, and when they go, well, I was a big kid, you know. Yeah, I, you so. know, I, I was never a small kid, you know, always heavy set. But I actually started wrestling. As a kid, oh, right. so that was actually where it, it all began from. Was from wrestling at, at Flinders University with South Australian wrestling. Uh, Stan Werner, Lubo Hoffer, all the coaches there, David Schumacher, they were all my uh, initial entries, I guess, into uh, strength style sports, yep. um, elite style sports. So that was where it started, but then obviously moved into what I guess everyone knows me for now, into the weightlifting uh, when I was fifteen. Which I was very lucky, to be honest, to, to go back to digress to the to wrestling. I was very lucky to win um, two national titles as a as a junior. So I was very lucky. I had some great coaches, and and I, I got a very good start into my. So training that was career. Olympic style weightlifting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Olympic style wrestling. Yeah, when I started oh, wrestling, out. Yeah. yeah, and I won two national junior titles, schoolboy titles, and then moved on to weightlifting. So I had a nice little base uh, of hard training as a as a kid, which moved me into weightlifting when I when I was 15. So I was very lucky to get great coaching from such a young age, which is very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. And then, yeah, look, I moved into weightlifting when I was 15. I got scouted at, at my at my high school. I, uh, the weightlifting club came out and they took a shining to me. Um, I guess I, I lifted the most out of anyone in the school, which was nice, I guess. I was only a 15-year-old mm -hmm. kid at the time. And, and then that was where, I guess, my love of strength sports started and was very lucky to make a few Australian teams as a weightlifter and compete for my country was obviously the biggest thing and was so a huge you, thing. So you competed for Australia? Yeah, twice. I competed at the Pacific Games and I competed at Australia versus New Zealand back in 2013. And I think 2011 or 2012, I made the Pacific team. Yeah. Which was a lot of fun. I got to go to Nauru and compete at the Institute of Sport. Oh, sorry, not Nauru, in New Caledonia. So I got to compete there with the with the Islanders' best teams and stuff like that as a junior, which was awesome. And then I got to compete again, Australia versus New Zealand, 2012 or 2013, which was just an absolute ball. That was probably one of the more fun comps I've done. And um, I tried for the Commonwealth Games and, and trashed my wrists. I really did some bad this damage. Was, what, what year are we talking about now? So Commonwealth Games was, uh, was 2000. When was Scotland? That was the last one. So what, four years ago? So 2014? Okay. All right, 15. so it wasn't that long ago. No, no, no. no. I'd, I'd gone into into weightlifting. I'd done, you know, I think I probably did my best when I was a junior. Um, and I, I then took up Strongman at about 17. Um, that about the same time we'd met, I'd probably a little bit before I started doing Strongman, I'd, mm. I'd met you. But I started Strongman when I was about 17. Um, but I had gone back and forth between weightlifting and Strongman for a few years. Um, so I'd actually gone between the two, but I, I'd come back for the uh, the the Australia versus New Zealand competition. The coaches had sort of gone, well, look, Jordan, you're you're right on the cusp of the Commonwealth Games team. Um, would you 
attempt to make them. I said, look, uh, you know, my strongman's going really well. I've made a few professional shows. I've travelled a fair bit with strongman at that point. And I was kind of like, uh, not really sure. And they said, well, look, it's open for you to try. And I said, you know what? I'll knuckle down and try. So I was training really well. I was being coached really well. And then I'd come into training one day and I went for a heavy clean for three repetitions, which was 170 kilos at the time. And I happened to catch the last clean wrong and it pinned my elbow onto my knee and the 170 kilos had ripped back my wrists. Ooh, so I'd crushed the capsule, tore the ligaments and bruised the bones in my wrist. Yeah. All in one foul swoop. Um, I kept trying to go through. I kept trying to train through it. I'd wrapping in quarter zones and it just, I couldn't. I'd, I'd gone from, you know, trying to clean and jerk 170 for a triple back to 150. Yeah. You know, even less than that. I could barely even turn my wrists over. So... You know, there's been some big ups and downs. But again, like I said, I've, I've, I've tried to go back and forth between the two sports a little bit. So like I said, it's, it hasn't been the, the smoothest sort of run where I went wrestling, weightlifting, strongman. It's kind of gone wrestling, weightlifting, strongman, weightlifting, strongman, Highland Games, strongman, you know, really mixed. Well, I still see you do that. You put up videos and you one minute you're throwing stones up in the air and the next minute you're doing clean and jerk. So is, are the two training methods still complement each other? I... L- or do you focus, I'm just going to do a bit of weight. It depends on yeah. what's coming up, I guess. Yeah. Um, for, for me, I always looked at, I guess one of my heroes is a guy named uh, Misha Koklaev, who's from Russia. I think he's six-time Russian weightlifting champion. Um multi-world record holder, Russian record holder, you know, just a legendary strength athlete, but he's been... Yeah, I, I follow all these pages. He's just he's, crazy strong. He's won the Highland Games. He's set world records in Highland Games. He's set world records in almost every sport he's been. He is what I consider to be the greatest strength athlete of all time. Zadrunas, who everyone knows in the strongman, mm. Zadrunas Avikas is the greatest strongman of all time. This is not, not even close. But Misha wasn't just a strong man. He was a weightlifter. He was a powerlifter. He was high on games. He just did everything. And I just looked at his career and went, wow, he's done it all. Like, he's done everything. You know, I guess I found my niche in that I, I'd like to think I've tried my best to be as similar as possible. Not, you know, not to mimic him exactly because there's only one him. I'm not him. I'm me. Um, he is who he is. But, I just love that he can walk on to any platform mm. anywhere in the world and be world class. Yeah. You know, absolute world class. So for me, I guess I've sort of looked at him going, you know what, I you know, trying to be that jack of all trade master of none is one way of looking at it. But, you know, I've I've done my very best at everything I've tried. And yeah. you know, if I could go across all the sports and say I've done very well at all of them, I'd be very, very to have a career half as good or a quarter of good as his would mean I'm doing pretty well. You, you mentioned <sighs> um, strongman, powerlifting, weightlifting, mm. and Highland Games. So what's what's the difference? What's Highland Games? Now, all I can think of straight away is throwing a big log over <laughs> in the air. And that's yeah. basically the difference right yeah. there. Yeah. So look, if you, if you break the sports down into different areas, so you go weightlifting, is what you see the Olympic Games, yeah. snatch, clean and jerk. Uh, powerlifting, squat, bench, yep. deadlift. Then you sort of go, okay, strongman, that can be anything. <laughs> That's right. I, I've, in strongman, I think I've I think I've thrown a fridge, I think I've carried, oh, I've lifted a, I remember FedEx, my first FedEx, my first pro show, 2012, we had the rocket lift. I don't know, did you come to 2012 FedEx? Yeah, I think that's the one I was at where you were there. We had a yeah. giant rocket between my legs. A big red <laughs> rocket between my legs. Seriously? You know, As we all do. Yeah, oh, yeah. totally. <laughs> and that was an event. You know, we can do anything. But Highland Games... Highland Games is, is very steeped in tradition. It's a very old-style um, competition from hundreds of years ago in England, in Scotland where it began in Scotland and obviously branched out around the world. Now it's very big in Holland, massive in the US. So Holland Games is very much a throwing style competition. Mm. So a lot of the athletes that are real good at Holland Games are ex-discus, ex-shock, yeah. ex, you know, ex-power athletes. Misha, perfect example, ex-weightlifter, just power, loads of it. So 
Highland Games, you have events like the Caber Toss, which is one mm. you were talking about before, the That's big right. pole that you have to mm. flip over and you do it by the angle that it hits. Then you've got like the stone puts, which are like a shot put except a massive rock. Yeah. Then you've got like the 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 stone the um, fifty six over the bar, which is like a, a fifty six pound weight with a chain and link, and it's basically a high jump style pole vault competition where you have to throw the weight over your head, over the bar, and back down behind you. You know, which is a cool thing for guys with loads of leg power and yeah. stuff like that. It's a, I, I like 56 over the bar. I like that. Event. So in the Highland Games, it's the same thing all the time. Like it's always the same weight throw, the same. Cable. Yeah, there, there yeah. is a caber. No, um, the usually you have a, a light. Like if you're doing like a, a they have a throw, like a, a a heavy and light weight throw. Yeah. So one's a certain weight throw, the other one's another weight. So you've got a light and heavy. A lot of them, uh, there's a light one and a heavy one, but you've got to do both. Yeah. So you've got the light and heavy hammer, which is like a giant stick with a ball on the end. And it's like a hammer throw. So you plant your feet, turn, 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 yeah. and throw it. So you've got the light hammer, the heavy hammer. You've got the light throw, the heavy throw. Then you've got the 56 over the bar. You've got the caber toss. Um, you've, most of them have uh, a light caber. I'll, I'll explain how the caber works. You have an entry caber, which is a light, short one. Then you have a, a competition caber, which if you make the first caber, you can move on to the second one. Yeah. And a competition one's a set height and weight as well. Oh, right. yes. And then yep. you have a challenge caber, which is usually just phenomenally big and heavy. Yeah. And that's, you know... The guys that can turn the comp one move on to the challenge yeah. one, and it's but they're great. always the same at, at each contest. The same. No, they can be different. Oh, so, they can. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, the yeah. cabers can be different. Yeah. The other stuff is usually set. Like yeah. the fifty-six, it's always a fifty-six. It's not heavier yeah. when you throw it over the bar. But the cabers, I've seen. I've, I'm not very good at caber. A good friend of mine in Sydney, Luke Reynolds, his name is. He can turn a caber on a dime like he doesn't even have to warm up he can just pick it up and just turn it you know yeah. he's just got the confidence and the ability and the skills me on the other hand I almost toss one into the crowd I, <laughs> I remember going to one in Hawkesbury and my girlfriend was sitting in the crowd and I pulled it up into my lap and I've gone to throw and I've seen the caber turn on me and I'm aiming towards the crowd and she's <laughs> shaking her hands going no no and I've just sort of let it go um, but yeah cabers like I, cabers can get 20 foot yeah. 20, 20 plus foot tall that's huge you know they're not if you sort of go by weight they're only about 80 kilos but 80 kilos when it's 20 foot high yeah, exactly. and yeah. it's always top heavy so it's always where your hands are at the bottom is smaller yeah. and the top's always wider so you've got to get used to having 80 kilos moving around on your shoulder going oh where's the stable point it's very technical and very confidence um, caber toss. It's extremely confidence lifting to get it right. Yeah, that's probably why I'm not so good at because I've got no <laughs> confidence at it. But it, it's Highland Games is just something so different, but a lot of fun. So, do you have a Scottish background, Mum? Yeah, because my mum you, is, yeah. yeah. I see you competing. Uh, um, what is foreign? In the kill, oh, the yeah, kill, the, the kill, foreign, and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, Mum's side of the family is. Yeah. Um, Scottish, so I wear the kilt, and I'm very lucky to do a lot of S Scottish games in Australia when I do compete. Um, so yeah, mum's side is so that's why I've got the ink work on the arm as well from yep. that. Um, so yeah, yeah, the kilt comes out most competitions, uh, most MC events, and just you know, it it I guess it makes me different from everybody else. Yeah. You know, it always I guess in the sport we do, you are kind of fighting up against the best guys you know lucky to compete against the best guys in the world and you know the kilt is my little um i guess my little thank you to my family for giving me what i've got yeah. you know and and um yeah it's always good fun and like i said it's something that people remember me by as well which is i think people nice. also remember you by with your victory roars and <laughs> Mate, that have you ever not... watch um, <laughs> yes YouTube um, oh, no. Biggie Stephens and you'll see a few of his roars yeah but, yeah no, I mean look I think that's great you know you, you develop in a personality and, yeah and you've got a good reputation as an MC I've seen you as an MC at Strongman you're very good thank you very much I've you know I've tried to hone my you know craft as an MC um, 
you know, I've learned from, I've had some awesome mentors, you know, like I said, I've listened to yourself, MC, bodybuilding shows, talking for years. Nick, who used yeah. to do your bodybuilding shows, mate, Nick is is a superstar to say the least of yeah. MC. We'll he's, get on to Nick a little bit later, a, but you're right. Oh, I mean, he's just a gentleman he's and without doubt the best MC in the country. Oh. And he can walk into anything and just start, and he'll captivate the crowd. He, he's amazing like that. And, you know, Nick's in, like a, one of the top guys, a guy named Colin Bryce, who runs World's Strongest Man, who's been the voice of Strongman for oh, yeah, goodness knows yeah. how long. And everyone knows Colin's That's voice. Right. Yeah. Everyone knows Colin's voice. Guys like that, yourself and, and gentlemen like that, and a guy named Harry Mitchell, who a friend of mine who um, MCs uh, in Sydney and New South Wales, just that beautiful voice, the, the pronunciation, the, the power, you know, not actually yelling, but the power that comes across. Maybe that's where I've got it from all those yelling yeah. after lifts. <laughs> it's just so natural for me to try it's and right. just yell and make a noise without actually even trying. Yeah. But, you know, I've been so, so lucky. And I guess it comes back to the training side of things too. I was very lucky as a junior to have great coaches as an athlete, but I've had so many good mentors around me in the sense of... Um, the emceeing and the talking stuff because as a kid I couldn't talk in front of a crowd I hated it I, I, I was hated the, I was the same oh, you know? how bad was it when you were a kid you're like I don't mm. want to do that it was one talk. of the biggest fears always in school yeah. if you had to do a presentation or something <sighs> and I can remember my first bodybuilding comp you know, I was terrified but once you start you sort of you get into it and I really enjoy it now and I can see you do it as well oh, it just becomes so natural for mm. you like, I'm sure you know once you walk out on stage you know, the first 10 seconds, you're sort of like, oh, okay, let's just get a rhythm yeah, going. But once right. that rhythm's going, you just talk and exactly talk. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get back to a bit of strongman <clears throat> still. Um, you've done a few professional contests. Yes. So um, that was at FedEx. Was that like the Giants Live yeah, part so of that? So I, how, how did you get into that? How did, how did you get into that league? You were competing with the best in the world. I was so... You know, that's probably in my career a, a massive highlight. And, you know, I was 21. That so was the one at FedEx, wasn't that it? Was that was 2012. That's, well, that's when you did really well in the yoke. That's right. Oh, 2013. That yes. was the next year. Yeah. So I was 22 at the time. Yeah. My first, yeah, my first two pro shows. It's funny you remember that yoke. I actually yeah. put a photo of that the other day. <laughs> but um, 2012 FedEx was my first professional show. I was 21 years old. And I'm so, you know, it's an honor for me to say that I'm still the youngest professional strongman in Australia ever. Yeah. I was the youngest, the youngest male or youngest athlete to turn pro, you know, 21 years old. And I was, and I was competing against Eddie Hall, who's now mm. the world record holder in the deadlift. A good friend of mine who has passed away, unfortunately, Mike Jenkins, uh, who could have been one of the best of all time. Mike Burke, who's another champion. Nick Best, who's a world powerlifting champion, et cetera, et cetera. The, the top South Africans, the top Australians were there. Like, it was a, a massive show. And there's 21-year-old Jordan Steffens at 120 kilos body weight <laughs> just sitting there going, oh, goodness me, should I be here? But, you know, it was that first year out, you know, I'd done the uh, qualifier. You know, I was starting to hit my strides at that point. You know, 21, I was starting to actually increase my strength. And... And I was starting to improve a lot more. And, you know, I stepped onto the big stage in front of a massive crowd of people. And, you know, it was an absolute ball for me. And I really got me to understand where I was as an athlete and as a person and how things are really done on the big stage. Yeah. You know, it's not like a little comp at a gym. It's something really mm. different. You're, you're competing at Giants Live, which is a TV show. Everything there is, you know, you've got a Foxtel camera in your face the whole time. You know, it's very, <laughs> very different. You know, things are done to the TV. You know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a television show. You know, the best athletes are there, but you've got to remember, I was warming up for the, the keg carry. We were ready to go, but the cameras weren't ready. And I was psyched, I was pumped, I was ready. I was, you know, come on, Biggie, let's go. And they're like, no, no, guys, we've still got a few more minutes of the cameras ready. So I've had to bring myself back down. Mm then bring myself back up again. And that was a huge learning curve for me for my first year because I probably psyched myself out yeah. by the time I'd <laughs> even gotten to the event, first event. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that was my first year. And 2013 was the year that I, I probably had one of my best years in Strongman. I, I came second at Australia's Strongest Man late 2012. Um, but the guy that actually won had gotten six. So I'd... I'd actually taken over the top Australian spot in 2012. Oh, right. So I was a top Australian in 2012, unfortunately, because one of the 
other gentlemen had gotten unwell. So I came into um, 2012 as one of the top ranked Australians. And um, when I found out there was a yoke walk in it, oh, my smile grew huge because that was an event for me that for some reason naturally I found very easy. I was not the biggest squatter. You know, you 2013, we had Derek Poundstone, Nick Best. Uh, who else do we have? We had Jack McIntosh from the, uh, the UK. We had the top South Africans. Uh, then we had Warwick Brandt from Australia, Eben LaRue, uh, Mark Wells, and Robert Kilpatrick, and a guy named Lars Robakin, who was an arm wrestling champion. But some of these guys are like 400 kilo squatters. Warwick had front squatted 360 at the time. Was that the show where you did the deadlift at the pro show on the stage? That was the one because I could hear you guys yeah, in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I've so, got that photo of you deadlifting on my gym wall still. I remember, I remember <laughs> With the big, big that's the tires. tires. I yeah. remember walking the Aussie muscle the first time seeing the gym. I remember when you first opened up going, Jim, one, where did you get that photo from? Because I remember you in the crowd and two, why have you put me up in the gym? Come on, man. But that was because I d- had done so well in the yoke carry, I was fourth. Yeah, fourth or fifth, one of the two. So I was right up with the top pros at that mm. event, and I was stoked. This is, little, like I said, little Jordan Stephen <laughs> from Adelaide, you know, finished a, a top five finish in an event against the best in the world. So I was stoked. I was pumped. And then we went for the pro show that night in the deadlift, and I got paired with Nick Best, who was one of the best deadlifters on the planet. <laughs> and I'm not a good deadlifter. I never have been. What was the weight on there? It was, was 350 on, on a stiff bar with tyres. With tyres, like, yeah. Oh, I remember, and this is a, a funny story. Sorry, one of the guys, like, he, Nick. he blew his um, wrist strap or something. and Did he hurt his that, arm or that something? That was, um, oh, who was it? That was, one of the, uh, that, was one of the, that was the English guy. He popped it off and yeah. it threw him off. Yeah, he'd strained something up in his shoulder because mm. it thrown him off That's so right, hard. yeah. But I'll tell you a funny story leading into that event. So I'd done the yoke and there's a guy named Sven Carlson, who I'm assuming most people that know strongly know who he is. Yes, yeah. um, he, after the yoke walk, goes, wow, that was a very, very good yoke walk. And Sven was the was the champion of yokes. So there's Jordan going, wow, the best ever. She said, oh, my yoke was good. So I had this, you know, I was pumped and stoked. And my heart was you know, <laughs> buzzing around. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. So they'd done the event for the next event. And we were paired up, and I got paired with Nick Bess, and I'm sitting there going, oh no, <laughs> I've been paired with one of the best deadlifters in the world. So we've walked out onto the stage, introduced Jordan Stevens, introduced Nick Best. Gentlemen, are you ready? So we've set up, and I'm sitting there going, oh, this is gonna be so <laughs> heavy. And I've, put, and I've gone, go, and I've pulled the bar, and I felt the bar coming up, and I've just, bang, it's hit the ground again. I've gone, well, I'm not gonna get a rep. So I've, I've hung there for a minute, I've tried again and it just couldn't break off the ground a second time. So I've stood up and, you know, waved it off and said, no, that's mm-hmm. me done. And I've looked over and I've, you know, took, you know, backed up um, Nick and gone, come on, Nick, get him done, get him done. Nick pulls a world record. So Jordan's pulled zero reps <laughs> and Nick Best has pulled a world record. So we've moved off and I've shook Nick's hand and gone, well done. Like I said, I could hear you, I could hear Nick Jones, I could hear everyone in the crowd go, come on, Big Eight. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, it's never happening. <laughs> and we've walked off in Sven Carlson's way on the side of the stage. He goes, Jordan, how was the deadlift? How many reps did you get? I said, oh, I zeroed it. And he goes, well, that wasn't very many reps, was it? And I've just turned around and gone, oh, man. And he's just pissed himself laughing. You know, and he's gone, that's okay, next time. And he's tapping <laughs> on the back, so I've walked off. But I can remember that so clearly going, I've got zero reps. And he goes, well, that's not many, that's not many reps, was it? And I'm like... I know he goes well look next time and he like I said he pat me on the back as I walked off and you know it was just nice to have that but it was it was funny as hell too you know at least I can say I was on the stage for a world record yeah I can remember that yeah. but um it was it was cool to be paired up there and it was cool to be a part of it because you sort of set up on the stage and you can hear the the guys in the crowd yourself and a few others go, come on Biggie because you've got the spotlights on you, as you understand in bodybuilding, yeah. you can't see anything. Can't see, yeah. All you see is the referee in front of you giving you the up and down <laughs> signals. I'm like, oh, you, you, you kind of bit like a deer in the headlights. Yeah. But that they were my first two years in, in my first two pro shows. Like I said, I had an absolute ball. I was really young at the time and the sports changed a lot since then. But 
oh, they were just so much fun. And, and like I said, competing with the best guys in the world. And I can at least, like I said, I can leave the comp going, I was top five in an event yeah. against the best guys in the world. And I was on stage for a world record. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's come so far now. We're only talking five years. Five, six years. He, he and is... Strongman now is... It's mainstream in TV, just about. Like, and, and all a lot of these guys, well, everyone knows Eddie Hall now. And social and media, obviously, plays a huge part because these guys are on social media It's now. funny how Strongman's gone and come. Back in the 80s, we used to... Oh, sorry, 90s, we used to Wheat Big series here in... Australia, which was run with Kerry Packer and all that stuff, in Sydney it was massive in Sydney. Not quite so big Australia wide, but in Sydney they used to bring the best guys in the world over to Sydney and do the Wheat Big series at the Royal Sydney Show. So they used to have like Magnus Samuelson, Magnus Van Magnus, and Gary Taylor, Jamie Reeves. Some of the best guys in the world would come to Sydney. And then obviously we went through the lull again, mm. and now we've come back again with the FedEx. We had the best guys in the world again, and it was funny talking about. The, the sport growing I remember the biggest competition we ran here in South Australia was the strength series at Aussie Muscle Gym we had like 35 competitors yeah. or 40 I remember it was night time by the time we were yeah. finishing and that uh, grass on the veranda was packed full of people it was massive <laughs> yeah. that's still the biggest show we've done numbers wise yeah. by a mile you know we had like yeah, 30 or 40 competitors and it was packed out the yeah. front of the gym it was mayhem you know the sports I guess like bodybuilding when Arnold was around we had that huge big peak of people you know, yeah. I don't want it to be Arnold and it sort of dropped off again and now we're coming back again That's but right. it's kind of the new breed coming through now of you know everyone wants you know everyone loves Eddie Hall they love yeah. Thor Bjornsson uh, Brian Shaw you know in the bodybuilding scene you know Ruley and Phil and um, Dennis and all those guys That's Wolf. Right. You know, you've got that new breed, but even you've got the other guys. Who's the um, the young Arnold lookalike? Um, oh, Callum. Callum, yeah. You've got guys like that, you know, who are so popular. Kwame, here in Adelaide, yeah. he's very well known and a great guy. And an absolute beefcake. But, you know, so many guys are... We've, we're having that reinvention, I guess, of uh, strength sports bodybuilding fitness industry That's Power, what, powerlifting especially is evident of that oh, and, I mean there's and crossfit crossfit as well yeah I, I find crossfit is sort of going down a little it bit it is now. now but powerlifting like there's every second week there's a powerlifting comp yeah. somewhere you know like a novice comp and they all got lots of, and the girls are really into it and that's the cool thing I've seen recently is the female interest in sport and nothing talking. sexier than a strong chick oh absolutely <laughs> a thick strong chick <laughs> yeah. man nothing sexier yeah. and, but that's the thing I'm going to use strong men as the example and actually going to use CrossFit for the example thanks to CrossFit we've got more women in strong men that's right than ever yeah. and in weightlifting our best weightlifter is Tia Claire Toomey she made our last Olympics and she's making our Commonwealth Games team and she was the fittest woman on the planet that's right Yeah. she is a CrossFitter that's moved to weightlifting she wasn't a weightlifter to turn to CrossFit and turn back to weightlifting. She was a CrossFitter to weightlifter yeah. and went to the Olympics. And she's the fittest woman on the planet. It is just mind-blowing. But if it wasn't for the sport of CrossFit bringing people in, we wouldn't have this huge turnaround of athletes wanting to do strongman. I'd say to powerlifting to a certain extent would have got a little bit of a flow over, but not as much as strongman. And that's evident in places like where we are now. We're recording this at Holland Performance. Mm. Um, Boothby Street yeah 65 Boothby Street uh, Panorama Panorama yeah so um, this is really this is like a Hard hardcore point. powerlifting strength weightlifting gym. strength oh, gym it yeah. is it's a hardcore but, gym but you know we've seen an explosion of these places yeah and yeah. It's, it's really cool and I love that style and I love I love the old bodybuilding style I love the, the weightlifting style and I love the hardcore style it's just great that so many different places are opening up covering all the bases yeah really good like I said CrossFit is starting to have that lull now but guess what powerlifting had that yeah weightlifting had that bodybuilding's had it exactly right and I think F45 it goes starting to come up and you know there's you get the peaks and troughs with everything yeah and you as a gym owner of course would understand at Aussie Muscle Gym you know you have peaks and troughs yeah and, but you guys being such a professional outfit years of experience so many good athletes coming in and out of your gym 
you know, you understand how it works. You've seen, mate, how many gyms have you seen come and go That's right. in the scene that you've been well, in? Well, you've seen my gym. I've, I've gone for that old school oh, style. I love it. I don't like these new gyms that all fancy and carpet oh, on the floor. Like, nah. a gym shouldn't have carpet on the floor. What happens if you throw up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, who's cleaning that up? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. I totally agree. <laughs> and, and I love that hardcore feel. It's really good. And I think it's starting to come back more and more. And it's probably to do with guys like Ed Hall and, and bodybuilding guys being a lot more social media savvy. Yeah. The Russian guys, can you think 20 years ago, would any of the Russian guys have put up a video of their training? No. No. The way that Iron Curtain was tight. Now, you can see people training in Russia, in Thailand, in Brazil. You've just got so Iran much... Iran and all these places. Absolutely. That, these yeah. Where you would never no, expect to see so these right. guys train, but you yeah. see them train. You see what they do. The social media savvy side of things has just made it explode for all these athletes um, who are so talented. Because, you know, you wouldn't see Big Ramy until he came onto a stage. No. But back home, he can video all his stuff. You know, all these guys. It's exactly so right. good, so good. So speaking of Russia, you went to Russia last year. Yeah, last so two years, yeah. What yeah. was, how did that come about? Like, what, it was a, what, what, what I don't even understand, was it a competition or? <laughs> so, the first year I went over, uh, so what's last year, 2017? So 2016, the first year I went over there, uh, was thanks to a good friend of mine in Melbourne, Chris Chancio, very well-known weightlifting family, um, just a weightlifting family full of legends. Um, so Chris had been invited over and said, Jordan, do you want to come over with me? I said, Mate, I'll go to Russia. I'd love to go there. <laughs> so got invited over by Dmitry Klokov. You know, Chris put my name forward. Dmitry messaged me and said, what are your best numbers? Who are you? Like, so this was a weightlifting competition? This was, this was what? what we called... The first year was called the Clock of Power Weekend. He'd run it once before. So what it was, it was basically Dmitry Klokov, who I'm sure people know from Instagram and social media, uh, went out and thought, okay, I'm going to run my own competition in Moscow, in Russia, at the SNN Pro uh, Fitness Expo. And I'm going to invite the best guys I can to come and do a multitude of events. But they weren't your strict weightlifting. It wasn't just snatch and clean and jerk. Mm. So I think the first year we had... Uh, Max snatch from hang, <laughs> Max jerk out the rack, Max clean and strict press, Whoa. Max, <laughs> geez, someone's coming down on top of us here. <laughs> um, we had Max um, thruster, and I think that was it for the first year. We might have had one more. I reckon that was it. I reckon we had four the first year. So that was the first year. So I got to compete against the best weightlifters in the world. Dmitry Klokov was competing. A guy named Dmitry Berestov, who was the last Russian male gold medalist. Uh, Dmitry Lapakov, who's a, a weightlifting legend. Then we had a few guys from Poland, who were all world champions there. Azerbaijan, um, Kazakhstan. We had some of these. We had. I was, I was doing snatches next to a world champion and I'm like oh this is a bit daunting it was kind of my first <laughs> pro strongman show again yeah and the biggest thrill for me was Misha Kuklaev was the MC in my first show out and um, he actually helped me through my lifts my snatch from hang I felt a bit rough and I'd lost a fair bit of weight on the flight over I think I dropped to into well into the 120s by then and I was training at 130 and I was feeling flat and he's like he's giving me these tips and these tips I actually snatched uh, 145 from the hang which was I believe a PB at the time and I was just ecstatic and he so from a hang meaning so you pick the bar up so snatch grip pick it up you have to take it down and then take it over your head Oh, so you you almost you're not taking it from the floor no you're picking it up as a deadlift and then taking it down and then putting yep. it over your head. So yep. it's a lot harder than just <laughs> pulling it straight off the floor. Yeah. So that was just, it was mind blowing. You, For me being a weightlifter at 15, I watched these guys growing up, you know, got, thinking to myself, you know, one day I want to compete against these guys. And that was my opportunity. And I went out and did the best I could. My goal was not to finish last. And I didn't finish last. So that was my goal. <laughs> my goal was not to come last. I didn't come last. And, you know, I was sitting, I remember going out to the platform to be introduced and you're looking out and there's world champions in the front row, Russian world champions. You had a crowd 
of a you know thousands yeah, I was just going to say, you, it was it like a huge oh, event with mate, the crowd. You, you've got there. to remember, over there, weightlifters there are treated like That's movie right. stars yeah. here. Yeah. So Dimitri walks off the platform and he is just covered by people. And I mean, not like <laughs> AFL players. How you know you yeah. you know Taylor Walker walks down the street, people know who he is, yeah. and they say hello or get a photo. He's like what. Who would I compare him to? He's like what um, Ed Sheeran was like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just go zoom straight to him and they don't care. It's photos, autographs, yeah. selfies. They're, they're on him. He has to like, he needs his own security. <laughs> you know, but they're all like that. All their weightlifters, you know, as soon as the comp was done, people ran onto the stage. People were running onto the stage to get autographs. And for me, that was, you know, it was so cool because you get treated so well when you're there because you're a weightlifter and because you're that's their national sport that's the difference you know here it's more of the media yeah. still treats and bodybuilding the same that mm. it's a freak shirt circus yeah and, underground you know, oh can we touch a bicep or yeah. can we lift something heavy you know they don't yeah but I, I've seen how these guys are treated even like when they have the world's strongest man shows yeah. they tend to have them in these countries where weightlifting is revered oh, and treated yeah. as a serious sport because they'll get the backing of the government and the crowd totally mm. and that's just it was a cool experience for me obviously like I said I've done my pro my pro strongman shows back here in Australia and they were fantastic and I got treated so well here there's just no doubt about it and the crowd loved it and the crowd was into it but you're still that freak show yeah you still are that freak show there you're an athlete mm. you are an athlete people you know they, they just go out of their way for you so much and you know you treat it so well and then obviously I did my first show and I had an absolute ball and Dimitri enjoyed having me there and Chris there as well Chris actually made top 5 which was tremendous for an Aussie yeah. we came back this year and Dimitri said you boys you have to come back you have to come back the crowd loved you was yeah. that this year or last that year that was 17? so 2016 was my first yeah. year um, the crowd I think the biggest thing the crowd freaked out about was my kill yeah. They, they didn't I think half of them knew what it was half of them were like what is this guy doing but they warmed to it so well yeah. a lot of people sort of go Russian people they just don't care they're just arrogant or they're angry all the time no I, I try to explain to people and I'm sorry I'm going off in no, a no, tangent no, 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 one way great. or another um, meeting Russian people at, in their own country you know you sort of have this thing in your mind that it's a, you know just some authoritarian mm. like a hole where it's just a terrible place to be it's not there is so much heritage there it's ridiculous you know going to the Kremlin is something you need to do yeah you know seeing uh, the mausoleum star uh, Lenin's mausoleum was just phenomenal but as an athlete and as a person over there you know Australians we're so relaxed and so open we'll talk to anyone yeah mm. have a beer no problem you know, because we, we're, we're like that. But over there, that country went through so many wars and I guess it's not a mistrust of people, but they want to know you before they open yeah. to you. Yeah. You know, that, that's that's what, how they are. But once they're open to you, they're so loyal, so caring, so loving. Like, uh, after the comp this year, uh, sorry, last year, 2017, Dimitri sent me a full message saying thank you so much for coming the Russian people loved you you have to mm. come back we appreciate everything you do this guy's a world champ a, a YouTube Instagram sensation he doesn't have to email me I'm just yeah. some bloke from Adelaide but because he respects athletes so much and you know we try and give everything we can to them while we're there they're just such good people once you get past you know and they know you once they get to know you they're some of the nicest people you will meet but getting back to um, the actual competing wise, the second year I was there, 2017, was Dimitri was starting something called cross lifting, which is the Russian, I'd say the Russian version of CrossFit. <laughs> so what it is, is... You imagine tanks and guns. Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> missile launches, yeah. everything. But <laughs> what it is, it's basically what Dimitri's done. He sat down with the heads of each sport, Kirill Sarachev from powerlifting, Misha from... Um, Strongman, Dimitri from weightlifting, and another guy, Dennis, from arm wrestling and, and grip yeah. specialist. And they've sat down as a massive group and gone, guys, we're a big family of strength. Let's bring it all together and make a sport out of what everyone's got. So 
and that, this is one of the big things I'll quickly say now this is one of the fundamental weaknesses we have in Australia is that no one's willing to work with each other in the strength sport industry everyone's got too much of a big head to work with each other mm. again it is what it is if that's the way things are it's the way things are but over there they can put their egos aside not thinking one sport's better than the other and go you know what work together yeah you know they all know each other they all know each other they're all the best in the world they are the best in the world best in the powerlifting world strongman weightlifting grips they are the best there's no one better than them so they've come together and gone let's build a sport that we can sort of bring everyone together like crossfit but with a bit more of a strength base to it so what it is is crosslifting is seven events like a crossfit workout so you have to do seven events one yeah. after another you have to do seven repetitions per exercise and you have a seven minute time limit. <laughs> oh, okay? Right, yeah. So So it's basically one minute per Basically, event. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you've got to hit seven. But what it is is six um like lifting events, so deadlift, snatch, bench press, push press, yeah. trick press, whatever. You gotta hit seven of them, uh six of them, sorry, and then the last event is a carry. So a yoke, a farmer's a tire flip whatever but that's you finish off you finish off as like a, a cardio style finish so for us for me personally I'm not a crossfit I'm a strength athlete so I had to do some work with a good friend of mine here named Steph Davies she's actually going to the Commonwealth Games next week she leaves in three days and she did some work with me because she has a crossfit background and a fitness background so I trained a bit of cross lifting I, you know I, I knew the events well from weightlifting and powerlifting and strongman but it's the actual not going out too hard. Yeah, you need killing to yourself. develop endurance. Yeah, right? at, at that time, I, did, <laughs> I wasn't quite the most heavily endurance athlete at the time. <laughs> let's put it like that. And I actually cut a lot of weight. I was down to about 125 at the comp. Considering uh, record breakers a few years ago, I was 145. So I dropped about yeah. 20K leading in a few years period. But I dropped it a lot the last minute. So we did the cross-lifting World Cup. Um... I got very close to making the finals, which I was kind of happy about and kind of not happy about. The happy side was like, yes, I didn't have to do that workout again because it almost killed me. And not happy because there's always that side of me that always wants to win. Um, but we had two competitions. Day one was a cross lifting, day two was a straight weightlifting competition and I was doing both. So it was kind of good that I didn't have to do the finals because I probably would have been tired of the weightlifting comp the yeah. next day. So I was more than happy. I think I missed out on fifth place by two repetitions. Um, it all, Like I said, it almost killed me. Um, <laughs> I, I was actually a little bit behind, but I made up for it in the stones. That We had these big rubber stones I was chucking over. So look, we'd, we'd gone through that and we'd moved on to weightlifting on day two. And, and that was the day I really wanted to make an impact. And um, I, I think a few people see my videos after and I actually won the open category the, the 105 plus the super heavyweight category so I actually got a gold medal in Russia and I put up a video <laughs> that night in Moscow and you know what still to this very day it doesn't feel real to me <laughs> um, to be the first Australian to go to Russia and win a gold medal uh, like I said it doesn't feel real still um should have been on TV here, news, and you uh, were. Yeah, yeah. We, we did a little bit with um, uh, with Channel Nine, which was great. They they were big on that, so yeah. I was so happy that they actually cared. But you know, for me, having legends like Dean Lucan Junior, uh, Dean Lucan, who won our gold medal at the mm. Olympics, is from South Australia. Robert Kabas, who was our last uh, Australian representative in Russia back in the World Championships in the eighties, to go over there and have athletes like that. You know, in the rearview mirror, but people still know who they are over there. Yeah. People know who Robert Cabas is. People know who Dean Lucan is. That's right. Everyone, they, Dean Lucan is loved in Russia because he beat the Americans mm. in America, <laughs> and Russia wasn't there. That's Mate, right, they yeah. think Dean Lucan's the bomb, mm. you know, because of everything he's done. But to, like I said, for me, that was just a surreal moment where everything in the world slowed down when I was on top of that podium and getting the medal. You know, I. At me being me, I was, I've done things and I've said, I used the Frank Sinatra quote, I did it my way, um, you know, and that moment was kind of like, well, 
everything I've done and all the hard work I've put in all the training all the help I've had from my good friends yourself and everyone that has supported me for so many years you know this isn't just for me this is for them this is everything I've done and every bit of support went to this gold medal and and you know like I said looking back on it now still puts a big smile on my face but <laughs> it's you awesome. know it's, it's something that I will always remember and something that like I said I don't have heaps of money to give to people and to thank people with and yeah, yeah. not a millionaire but this medal is something that's never been done before and it's because of all the support that I've got that I've got it you know and obviously a, a little bit of hard work went in there oh, as well but I think there's a know. lot of hard work <laughs> no that's awesome so um you know that was that was a terrific story that obviously the highlight oh, of everything that mile. you've done yeah, yeah. look that you know the pro shows they were highlights of the time you know becoming the top ranked Australian in 2012 was huge going to Moscow for the first time was massive um, you know winning the stone, Australian stone lifting championships three times in a row my first three attempts you know that was massive I've been so lucky to have so many good opportunities and so much good help to get me to reach my goals but that gold medal is you know something that I can have with me forever and, and you know, just be <laughs> happy about I guess yeah, yeah. That's awesome. What's it? What's it take to be you, like a strong man? Like, tell us a little bit. What you know? What's your nutrition like? Your training, like you you train every day. Yeah, um, I, I guess know? these. We are... see these videos. I mean, the biggest one has been Thor's video that went up on um, on he's... YouTube a, a couple of months ago with his twelve thousand oh, calories a day. He, he is. You know, those guys are so extreme. So extreme. They're so big. I remember Thor coming here 2014 and having a chat with him and you know this guy is 6 foot 9 mm. 6 foot 10 and 185 kilos with abs Brian Shaw is 6 8 with like I think he was at the Arnold's they said he was 205 <laughs> you know that's this huge body weight and I think at my biggest when I set the yoke Australian yoke record I was 145 at about what 6 foot 1 6 foot what 10. did it take to get to 145 Oh, <laughs> it took a lot of eating. I, I was training hard and heavy all the time. I was doing yokes here with, you know, 600 kilos regularly, you know, 500 kilo yokes, you know, regularly. And I just needed to fuel up. And I was eating every two hours, every two hours. Yeah. Like the only time I probably wouldn't eat every two hours as well. Was like, but I'd eat before I went to bed. Soon as I rolled out of bed, it wasn't anything else. It was <laughs> food. You know, I was eating every two hours, just constant food like meals like most people go oh yeah you have a meal and I have a sandwich well, that's not a meal that's a sandwich yeah a meal is your steak your chicken your eggs your, you know just a full plate what normal people have for dinner I had every two hours you yeah. know that was just to get myself up there and try and maintain it because mm. different comps mean different things so the record breakers I needed to be 145 I needed to just to handle the weights so I had to be that heavy but the cross lifting I couldn't be 145 mm. I would have had cardiac arrest walking to the <laughs> equipment but you know you had to be different weights you had yeah. to be so you know it just depends on what I'm getting ready for like I said for the cross lifting I obviously up to my cardio training leading in I just ate differently at different times to try and make sure I wasn't putting on too much bad weight yeah um you know, as being a strong man, you, you do have a level of fat on your body because you're dealing with big weights. That's right. Yeah. You know, you just have to... It takes a big man to lift big weights. In weightlifting and powerlifting, you have the weight classes and stuff like that. Strong man, when you become an open, they ain't no weight class. Mm. I'm 140, or what am I now? One, I'm just 130 now, maybe a little bit under 130 now. And I've competed against guys like Thor who mm -hmm. near 200 kilos <laughs> there's no weight class yeah there's no weight class and he's a big man that's why he lifts big weights yeah you know so dieting for me is depending on the type of competition if I was coming into a big heavy show of course stack on the pounds you know eat well but eat a lot yeah you know just just try and get the Lots calories of steak, in eggs. yeah just get the yeah. calories in you know uh, trying so lucky to be sponsored by Gentech Nutrition yeah and Nick I'm so lucky their supplements are fantastic I you know, can't talk higher. You know, their P2P, their intra workout training mm. for me because I'm training for so many hours. I, I remember training three or four hours in one stint just yeah. so I could get through it all because I needed such big breaks between the exercises because it was so heavy. 
but that PTP is what kept me going through the training sessions. But yeah, steak and eggs and you know rice and pasta, just getting the carbohydrates <laughs> and calories in there. Talking to a bodybuilder, I feel kind of bad saying that. Well, no, but and I the get, ice cream. I get that all the time. I get guys <laughs> come up to me all the time. And I said, oh, you need to eat more. You know, they yeah. say I can't gain any weight. I'm the you need. To, oh no, I eat heaps. No, you and, don't. And no, you don't. You, yeah. you think you eat, and your family might see you eat one big meal, and they think you eat a lot. But, you know, even people don't even understand that 3,000 calories of good food is a lot of food. Yeah. You double that to 6,000, and it is so much food that the, the normal person wouldn't even contemplate on trying to eat yeah, it it's one like, day. It's like the old saying, when you feel like you've eaten enough, eat more. Yeah. You know, I'm sure, like yourself, when you've put on body weight and bulked up, you're eating to when the point of you actually not really liking the food anymore. No, that's Because right. it just tastes the same. <laughs> you know, it, it's just about trying to build up. And that's, I guess, for a strong man, just trying to build up steadily through your career. Yep. You know, I started my strong man career at about 95 kilos and worked up to 145 and I'm back down again. Yeah. So it's just about building slowly, being smart, training hard, but training smart. You know, there's all about trying to become the best as quickly as possible but that doesn't work no I don't think Ed Hall thought one day he was going to deadlift 500 and he just went out and did it the next day yeah it took him years and years and years of hard work so just take your time slow and steady it's a marathon not a sprint Mm. as you understand exactly right same things in bodybuilding absolutely so um, what do you do? What do you do during the day? You're, are you a PT? I've seen you advertise like PT. Yeah, I, so guess, you do... I guess in recent times, I've probably slowed down on the heavy lifting side. I'm still relatively out there competing, not as much as I used to. I guess I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've slowed it down just a little bit um, just to try and not pick and choose, but I'm doing a lot of charity events now, so I do a lot with the Cancer Council and Variety. You know, I guess I've, my avenue of competing has changed a bit. I'm sort of looking more towards what I can sort of do as an entertainment thing because, you know, strongman's an entertaining sport, yeah. mm. you know, and I want to give to people. Like I said, I don't have millions of dollars. I can't give charities millions of dollars, but I can give them my time, my ability and being strong to try and go out there and try and make somebody's day better or try and raise some money for a foundation. Yeah. So in, in the sense of competing-wise, I still do comps here and there. Like I said, I do a lot of demos. And like I said, I, I work with so many great foundations and people. It's just a, a real good thing, a nice heartwarming feeling to me to know I've helped someone, even if it's just one person. you know. But on a day-to-day basis, I'm coaching basically full-time now. I work out of HP, Holland's Performance, uh, with my crew, the Big Gym mm. crew, which is one of the club, weightlifting clubs here in South Australia. And I also work out of um, Hilltop CrossFit, Mount Barker, yeah. six for six weightlifting club. So I'm the head coach at both clubs. Oh, cool. So I've been very lucky. I've worked with some awesome young, talented weightlifters. I've got a young kid who's this close, and I mean this close, tiny bit, to making world juniors in his second competition. I've got a young kid who's 13 years old. He just cleaned and jerked 60 kilos for three reps, even though he's one hour and 66. I've got so many, you know, young, talented guys and girls that I'm working with, and I just have a ball. So, like I said, still competing, still training, yeah. Um, but just um, doing a lot more. So your your coaching work is basically your job. That's what... yeah. I'm still bouncing. Oh, you're <laughs> I'm yeah. still bouncing. <laughs> yeah. Still, yeah. I, I think I think I need to give that one a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I've been, geez, I've been bouncing since I was before I was 18. So I'm still doing security work. Yeah. Um, here and there. So I'm trying to level that one down a little bit, um, but the coaching stuff's great. Yeah, I have so much fun helping people and trying to help people improve. You know, one kilo here, one kilo there. You know, just little things here and there. But we've got South Australia's got so much talent. Mm. We really do. We have so many talented athletes in so many different sports, and uh, I want weightlifting to be what it used to be here in South Australia, where we dominated. You know, I really do because I think we've got the talent. I really do. Awesome. That's terrific. So, the future? The future. Anything coming up? Anything there coming is. Up? There yeah, is. You but I can't this? bring it up oh, yet. I can't. I'm sorry. I, I will. mean, you could expose this to our seven listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, seven's better than none. All right? So, look, I don't know if people have seen this on my Instagram or my Facebook. I'm writing hashtag 621. 
can't say it yet because I'm not allowed to, but there is something coming up here soon. On the in in May, late May, uh, I will be doing something here in South Australia. Cool. Um, keep your eyes peeled, Kim. You'll be one of the first people I tell. <laughs> um, I wish I could let it loose now. Actually, you know what? I'm, actually, I'm going to check my emails. And Kim, you can you can vouch for this because you're watching me do it because I'm waiting for an email back if I can get an email back from this certain person I'm allowed to say it and I'm not okay. I haven't got that email <laughs> my apologies um, so yeah there is a big something coming up in the next two months for me um, for South Australia um, yeah so keep your eyes peeled on the Australian Muscle page <laughs> Instagram page Facebook page Radio page, you know, keep eyes peeled for mine on my pages as well, of course, because it, it's going to be big. Yeah. It's going to be massive. So, how can people contact you? So, you're on yeah. uh, social media? Yeah, 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 I've got my Instagram account. Yeah. So, people can get onto my Instagram and, and contact me there. I'm more than happy to, to chat to just people. Jordan Biggie Steph? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't even. That's how often I give out my Instagram because I have <laughs> no clue exactly what it is. Jordan <laughs> underscore Biggie. There okay, you go. There you go. And that's yeah. me on Instagram. So, uh, my my actual gym page is the Big Gym Crew. Yes, so I've seen that. People yes. are more than welcome. Shoot me a message. Anyone that hears this, if you've never done weightlifting, or you've done a little bit and you want to learn more, or you just want to have a crack or whatever, shoot me a message. Yeah. I'd love to hear from you. More than Mary. Just Jordan Steffens on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Biggie Steffens on yeah. Facebook. Um, I don't think anyone really knows my real name. I think <laughs> you know what it came up the other day in a conversation on on the Strongman page. Australian strongman nicknames and somebody's gone of course Biggie and, some, <laughs> and somebody's written underneath there going yeah this is one of those nicknames that has actually surpassed his real name yeah. so I think I think more people know me as Biggie than they do Jordan but yeah look the future well he's the same with my wife because I said I'm, I'm doing a um, podcast with Jordan and she's going Jordan Jordan who I'm their Biggie Oh yeah! <laughs> well, you were her security guard. That's one right. Of my bodybuilding Absolutely. Yeah, she yeah, remembers you straight away. She goes, "No, no, Biggie." Yeah. <laughs> it's funny like that. It, it's funny like that. It's gold. But like I said, but that's good for me. Moves a persona, I guess. But look, yeah, for the future, for me, you know, I'm still going to be competing. I, hopefully, I get to go back to Russia again. We're run, I'm running some weightlifting comps. I still run the Arnold qualifiers for the um, Arnold Strongman. I'm still around the place doing stuff here and there. I'm enjoying my coaching so much. I enjoy doing the podcast stuff. I enjoy doing the MC work. You know, like I said, the, the doors are open for me to do a lot more, and I'm, I'm having a ball doing it. Like it's going to be a big year, and, and I, I can't really, I can't wait for it. Really no, can't. that's great. Thanks so much, Jordan, for having this chat. No, thank you. I Kim. learned so much about you that I didn't even know. You know? And we've and known why, each other for twelve years yeah, exactly. or more. That's why I wanted to start this podcast, showcasing South Australian athletes and people. You know, just so that people can find out a little bit about you. Before we go, who do you want to thank? To be honest, I've got a huge line of list of people. I'm going to actually <laughs> start off with actually, you know what? It's there's only one real group of people I need to thank to stuff and that's my family my mum um, has been the biggest supporter of me my whole life without always her always is the mums are always there she with, <laughs> yeah without yeah. her I wouldn't be where I am she told me that if I had a dream to follow her and I haven't it's I've been so lucky you know really have been my family my grandparents my brother dad everything like that my whole family has been so supportive of me and i appreciate everything my sponsors you know gen tech nutrition who everyone knows nick who's just been one of the most lovely you've been dudes with nick for, since a teenager as well yeah. that and, was, and, and that to me as a person in this industry and in this business supplement industry i find so refreshing the loyalty that you have given nick um, all these years is just wonderful because as far as I'm concerned there isn't any anymore you see people chopping and changing you know one month they're spruiking their sponsor the next month they're somebody else and they'll go through 10 sponsors in a year it, it's the loyalty is really lacked in the past few years and, and I'm I guess I'm one of those people that uh, I just think I'm so grateful for people yeah. actually thinking I am good at what I do you know and if somebody thinks I'm good at it I just appreciate it so much I really do like I I couldn't thank my sponsors enough Adelaide Iron Laser who's been a, a, a fantastic sponsor of mine for so long you know they've been a huge financial sponsor 
Mate, Australian Muscle has was one of the first... I think the first strongman comp I did was sponsored by Australian Muscle. Kim, you've been around for so, so long supporting everyone, supporting strongmen, supporting myself. Yeah, well, like I told you before that uh, you ever want to come back to the gym, we'll have you back again. We've got to do another one. We have to do another one. But look, like I said, then I've been so lucky to have sponsors like the Wildlife who give me all my equipment, you know, my knee sleeves, my belts, everything like that. Clock of equipment. We've got clock of equipment here. You know, they've given me Mm. so much equipment. You know, uh, Massage Life, Big Paul Zabinski, um, you know, Dr. Brandon, my chiropractor, <clears throat> beg your pardon, <clears throat> and minus 110, another one, my cryotherapy. You know, I've been so lucky. Yeah, how are you finding that? Mate, that is awesome. Have you had it done before? I have. I went there when they opened. What did they you invited think? me. Well, I only did the one session. You mate, know, you but... need to come back. We yeah. need to go back as a team. <laughs> we need to go back as a team. It was cold. Oh, <laughs> mate, minus 110, it's chilly. Yeah. But again, look. But you found to, it's been beneficial? Oh, for yeah. my knees, I get a real bad patella tendonitis just from years of constant squatting and stuff like that. It just takes its toll on my body. And, you know, it's been such a, a good thing for me to get all the inflammation out of the yeah. area. Awesome. But again, like I said, all my sponsors, I'm just so lucky to have them. All the people that have supported me through the years, yourself, Ben Madden, um, the guys interstate, the Arnold's, uh, just so many people have backed me up. I've got so many sponsors I could list off and I appreciate them all so much and everyone that supported me. Like I said, it, I just try and want to give back to them for everything they've given me so much and I appreciate it so much. I really do. No, that's terrific. Well, thanks a lot, Jordan. That no was, worries. That Thank was the, you, mate. That Cheers. just flew that time, I can't believe Yeah, it. I know. <laughs> I was actually quite surprised how quickly that went too. I looked down and I'm going, oh, we're at 45 minutes. I'm going to speed up the conversation. <laughs> Yeah. No, well, um, definitely, um, you know, if there's anything that Australian Muscle can do in the future, just get in touch. <sighs> Mate, thank um, you so much. But, um, yeah. I appreciate Thanks so much. everything. No, no, thank you so much for having me on. No worries. Beautiful. Legendary. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Biggie Stephens. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Enjoy.